Hey, what's up, you two? This is your boy Chris out on the Gold Wing, out on the 21 Honda Gold Wing in a town called Albuquerque, New Mexico. On our way to the West Coast, been having a good ride so far. This is day three. And today, on the front, we got War Wagon. What's up, what's up? Prayer Warrior. Coast to coast. Composure. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Silver Bullet. In the house. We got J.D. from Chi-Town. Good morning. Godspeed and Jay. Good morning, beautiful people. All right, Goodness. all right. Don't forget that I'm still guy now. Don't forget who? Lightning Boat. Lightning Boat. We got Lightning Boat. I knew I was going to get somebody. 256 baby. All we got right. Lightning Boat. You know? <laughs> we said 256, huh? 256, baby. I always say the best for last, Lightning Boat. That's it. So we are here in Albuquerque right now. It's 75 degrees on the air temp, but I can feel the sun on my back. I can hear you. Barely, barely can hear you. Barely can hear me? No, no, I'll talk to God's feet. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Come on with it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm showing 75 degrees on the air temp, but I can feel the sun already on my backside. So we're going to try to get up oh, the road God. and try to get some wind behind us. Or they say get some miles behind you. So right now we have traveled. I've traveled approximately... 1,061 miles, 1,061 miles, and that's not including the Lambert's Run, which was about another 300 miles or so. Railroad tracks are kind of rough. Yeah, they are. So not counting the Lambert's Ride. But right now I'm at 1,061 miles on the 21 Honda Goldwing, and this is day three. Day three. And we got about a 600-mile ride toward Las Vegas. So it's been a good ride. I've been enjoying myself. I hope everybody's been enjoying themselves. I hope that everyone has been having a good time. So far, my Shoei helmet has been performing flawlessly. There's composure. Good morning. Good morning. Looking good with this Shoei helmet on. And so I'm testing out my Shoei. This is day three of my Shoei. So far, I'm impressed with how it feels. Some of you out there have been asking, of the helmet. how is the new helmet? It is lighter. It is lighter. I got to give it. It is a lighter helmet. If I had any gripes about the helmet, yeah, one of the gripes would be this chin strap. I, might. I like the ability to be able to ratchet and switch it. The strap-on, which I think is a great idea. The only problem is it sits right at my Adam's apple, and it pushes in on my Adam's apple. And also, uh, changing out the uh, the shield is kind of tricky. It's almost a two-man operation. It's kind of tough. You don't want to break the helmet. You want to be real gentle with it because you spend a lot of money for it. But A lot of money. Other, other than swapping out the the shield... From a darker to a lighter shield once it gets dark. Other than that, and the ratchet strap pushing against my Adam's apple, I, I like the helmet. It's actually a nice helmet. So what do I think about the Corbin seat at this point? Now that I put over a thousand miles on it on this over the past couple of days, I think it's slowly breaking in. It is firm. So we're going to ease on. We're going to wait on the rest of the crew, and we're going to make our way toward where we headed, Dustin, I-40? Yep. We're going to hit Coors Boulevard. That's our also academy for race car driving. Okay. You know, I'll take that go wing over there and run around the track a couple of times. Yeah, we can show them a thing or two. Yeah, we're crew We're right now we're headed to Coors Boulevard, and then that's going to run us. We're bypassing the I-25, I-40 exchange, so we don't have to deal with all that traffic. Yeah. And it's a kind of a nice ride down through uh, Albuquerque that a lot of people don't get to see. This is one of the nicer parts of Albuquerque to ride through. It's coming down Montano Road. 
And uh, also, special thanks to Dustin, a.k.a. War Wagon, because Dustin is actually giving us the grand tour of Albuquerque. He actually lived out here. And yep. A few moons ago, a few moons a few ago, moons I lived ago, out when here. He was knee-high to a June bug. <laughs> he lived out here, and uh appreciate Dustin, a.k.a. War Wagon. Happy to be here and do it. Happy to be us. here. Looks like our uh, rear adventure. The rear is coming up on us now. All right. We're making it. All right. Let's kick it back up to rolling speed. Let us know when everybody's caught up. They right here. All right. And we are about to cross the world famous Rio Grande River. The Rio Grande River. That's how I got here in this country. The Rio Grande. <laughs> Who said that? Prayer Warrior. Oh, uh, really? I thought you were from Mississippi, Prairie Warrior. No, I, and there it is. is. <laughs> right there is the Rio Grande. What the? That's it? That's it. <laughs> That's There's just enough water to take a bath. Oh, okay, there yep. it is. Okay, there it is. That's it. No, it just splits right there. It's, it ain't much. Prairie Warrior. Prairie Warrior, Prairie Warrior, I thought you was from Mississippi. Uh, My father from Mississippi. Oh. By way of... My way oh, Mexico. Oh, oh, Mexico. Oh, Mexico. I'm Not showing. the new one, but the old one. The old one. The original. The original. We're going to be taking a left. My left Is or your right? Uh, either one. You can choose. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Uh, outside. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice little ride. It's it's kind of cool this morning. It actually feels good. It's really nice. As long as you move, it feels good. Once you stop, it starts to creep in there on you a little bit. Man, they've, been, they've built this up out here. This is Rio Rancho. Part of Rio, Rio Rancho, Rancho, anyway. I see people sure looking at all these fine motorcycles up here. Everybody wants to get them an eye full. You know, I finally, on my go wing, normally when I fill it up, it shows me like a fuel range of about 190, 194. It actually jumped up to 200, and right now it's showing 213. Wow! So I noticed when we was coming into uh, when we was coming into Albuquerque on yesterday, I noticed the engine was just purring. I mean, it was just it was like man, it never even sounded that good before. So I filled her up with some shale. Premium. I think that was a ninety, what ninety one octane, ninety two octane. Yeah, ninety one or ninety. Ninety one, because back home, here, you know, yeah. it's ninety three. Yep. So I guess with this higher elevation, they lowered the octane. I guess I don't know. Yep. You need uh, you don't you need it. Don't have to have as much knock and ping protection up here because there ain't no uh, ain't as much air. All right. So you wind up running richer anyway because there's not as much air to get into the system. Okay, what you just said. Composure, what's your fuel range? 214. 214, yeah, so yours jumped. Well, I guess I'm not sure if yours is always over 200, but mine is never over 200. It, it fluctuates. I can never make rhyme or reason about it, but, yeah. Okay. Mine is at 261. Who said that? <laughs> oh, that was uh, Pratt Warrior? Yeah, that was Pratt Warrior, Mr. Econ Mode. Oh, he in econ. econ. I stayed econ mode. Mr. No Trailer, that's why. Mr. Oh, Mr. No Trailer. Mr. No Trailer. Mr. But no you know Trailer. What he, you know what he told me, right? He said, just keep keep a watch out. Just keep keep looking. He gonna get one. He gonna surprise us. He gonna say he 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 didn't say he was gonna get one. He said he gonna surprise us. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that that murder, murder beast could be in the air one on this one. That would surprise me. I, I, I agree. Hey, Composure, now, you have the manual model. They yes, still sir. give you hill assist with, with the manual model, too, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I wasn't sure about that. If you if you look back over your left shoulder, Chris, there's the Sandia Mountains. The Sandia Mountains. 11,000 feet high. Now, is that the... Uh, Mountain that you were talking about yesterday that has the, uh, we can take our bikes up there and there's a look out there? Yep, that's the Sandia Crest, or T. Harris, they call it. 
you go through Harris up to the Cedar Crest, I think is what it's called. And uh, that's the top of the Sandy. It's 11,000. They got those things with the binoculars and all that stuff. A little, little chip joint at the top. You can buy you some things. Okay. Everywhere in New Mexico you stop, you can buy some. They got the chips right there. Man, they're big on that. They're big on that. Every store you go to has a section of knickknacks and patty wax and all that stuff. Now, let me ask you a question, World Wagon. I'm noticing, like, the, the you know, these, I guess these are homes to my right. Seem like yes, a lot sir. of these places are what they use in stucco. Yeah, yeah it's stucco. A, it's, okay. it's stucco. It's an adobe. It's kind of like it traditionally is adobe. Uh, when they now they commercialize it and they use the stucco because it is more heat resistant rather than paint or siding or anything like that. Right. The the sun would just eat it up. Anything that you put that has wood or all that, the sun will just eat it up and destroy it. So they use that mud base. They car try to come in on me. They car try to come in on me. It's like a concrete mix, and then they got them tile roofs and everything. That's all because of the heat. That desert beats down on everything else, so that's the most most durable, and it, it uh more thermal efficient too. It hey, doesn't. Watch this. Uh, see, hit, hit a fish. You you grab the brake, and then it'll hold. Yeah. It'll hold for like six seconds. Huh. That's One, pretty cool. Two, three, four, five, six, and then it'll start rolling again. Huh. Yeah, mine has that. It's called my right foot, and I hold that brake on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as fancy as yours, but it's all. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. I think that's yeah. Cool. That's what I'm saying, man. Shoot. So you get on the hill, you just squeeze the front brake kind of hard. Automatically, yes, just lock in your hill assist. Let's we'll start merging into that right lane. Now we got ahead of that trunk. Now I wish that the hill assist. Lane, I wish that the hill assist wouldn't release unless you, you know, maybe touch the throttle or something just to make it release, but it only holds for like six seconds. Huh. Yeah, that'd be pretty nice if it just sat there until you was ready to move. Right. You should call Honda and uh, have them fix that. Yeah, they don't want to talk. They don't want to hear from me. <laughs> well, they're going to make the Caliente model, aren't they, with the special paint and everything? They're going to come out with that, so tell them to put the hill assist for 20 seconds. Hey, that, that's what I'm talking about. I receive it, brother, in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one. And all that up there to the right, that's all volcanic rock. Those three little volcanoes out there. They're huh. distinct. So most of this area up here is volcanic rock if you start digging down. They don't have any uh, active volcanoes here, do they? Nope, nope. They've been long gone. Okay. You know, sometimes it's good to just get out of your comfort zone and see something different, you know? So that's one thing I do like about the Gold Wing. It gives you the opportunity to kind of travel, see some things you haven't seen, go to some places you haven't been, and it don't cost as much because you're not filling up an entire, you know, gas tank. Oh, Sorry. Let's take this next lane. You getting over oh, to the right? Can. Okay, we're going, going over to the one right. time. Over to the right. I feel that we're premium for eighteen dollars. Woo! Four dollars, man. Cheap gas was four dollars and twenty-six cents. Man, look at that sign. Save your gas dollars. Come to Jiffy Lube. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Free battery test. Yes, sir. They walk out. They walk outside and say, "Start your car." Don't start. Yep, battery's dead. That's the free test. I'm talking about. What do you guys think of my new GoPro camera so far? For the uh, the footage. I thought you looked pretty good so far from what I've seen. Today I'm shooting in 1920 by 1080p. Hey, uh, Chris. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm looking at your. Your bike and compulsion bike side by side. Okay. And that trunk is noticeably larger. Yes, it is. It has what I call the huge trunk. To be honest, to be honest, it's actually bigger than the previous generation trunk. They made it. I'm not sure if it's bigger, but the, the way they designed it. Uh huh. It holds it, more. It, it seems like they give you more room. But uh huh. Yeah. They they need to make some bigger saddlebags and a bigger fairing. All the way to the right. 
Right. Yep, we are going to the right. We're going, going to, to the, the right. right. We're going west <laughs> all Dallas. Com- all coming traffic here. Oh, shit. Yeah. Got to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, just be mindful. Anything you say can be used in a Caliente video. I'm actually surprised, man. This Escapade trailer been pulling real good. Take the center lane, fellas. Take the center lane. We're going to set up center lane. Who on the back door? Uh, we got Godspeed on the back door. Oh, Godspeed on the back. Okay. Godspeed, you got your ears on? Yeah, I got my ears on. I ain't talking oh, to y'all. Y'all keep pulling moves like that. Well, I will say that you sound you sound wonderful this I'm morning. I'm good. I'm you sound good. really good. It was a car that was coming, and it cut right on my heels when you said go right. It was on my right. Oh, okay. That was a bad interchange. That wasn't. That was poorly designed. Also, let me mention that the car tire has been performing flawlessly. So, if anybody out there been watching this video and you've been wondering about the performance of the car tire, we've been riding from state to state, no issues. Pulling even the in curves. Even in curves. Even in curves. Yeah. Scary P. He is scared of the dark side. <laughs> the B ain't going to fit the rim. It don't. It'll fall off and you're going to die immediately. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not designed to aerodynamic. The camera, car, thrust, the camera thrust will be all wrong. That will be, the camera thrust will be told <laughs> in at 0. 0.8 degrees negative. <laughs> All right, Come, coming up here in front of us, we are heading up Nine Mile Hill. This is this is referred as Nine Mile Hill. Uh, back in the day, we used to run our four wheelers, dirt bikes, redneck trucks, whatever you got. We come out here and ride on the sand up here. It's a pretty good area to ride. This is all BLM land out here, Bureau of Land Management. All right, let's uh, jump this other lane. We're going to uh, kick it up a notch. All right. Jump this other lane and kick it up a notch. Now, Chris, tell me it don't look like Gus is just dragging his feet and them boots along the ground with that trailer. <laughs> it tell, does. Me that's, tell me that's not what that looks like. <laughs> it looks like Dustin got his feet hanging on the ground. Dustin, I see, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I call this trailer Bully and Black Betty. You reminded me of Humdinger when you stuck your leg out. <laughs> Humdinger said if he ever run into a deer, if a deer jumps out, he's going to stick his legs out wide. Hey, there's a little sand dunes right here to the left. Sand oh, dunes to the left. Oh, that's nice. I see yeah. that. That's really nice. It's pretty fun out there. It's pretty fun. They got right yeah. over to the right, over to the left. Oh, yeah. They got the nice dirt. If you fall off, the ground is soft. Well, it's softer. Oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty soft out there. Sand, uh, sandstone. Most of it's just worn down sandstone. All right, we're about to pop. Now, I'm out here. We're going to drop down into the Rio Puerco Valley. On this back side is the Rio Puerco. We're going to go past Route 66 Casino. Y'all ever seen that show called Make It Bad? Uh, we're here. Walter Watt. I'm going to speed up here in a moment. Bring it up a little bit up there, Dustin. I'm going to speed. Down, man. I got too far ahead, didn't I? Sorry about that. I was trying to adjust my camera angle. I noticed that it was it was leaning a little bit lower than what I want it to be. Gotcha. You know, I'm a perfectionist. I like everything to be perfect. Me too. That's why I'm on my third wife. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. And I finally got the perfect one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, All nice right. way to clean it up. That's All why right. I'm on the Nice save. That's, that's oh. called a save. Yeah, I had to keep going. See, I just have to make sure you understood. Keep nice. going until I got the perfect one. Y'all know she financed this trip for me, so. That's the perfect wife right there. Yeah, you can't get no better than that. You can't get no better than that. 
not only let you go on the trip, but pay for it herself out of her sock money. Sock money. <laughs> hey Dustin, if you want, hey Dustin, if you want to ride center, that'd be good. All right, I got y'all. Yeah, ride the yeah. Well, that's even better. Yeah, right, that's the money that that's the money that the, the old ladies just keep down in their uh we're going right. They, going right. Going, going to the right lane. Going to the right lane, y'all. Moving over yeah, one. We're losing the we're losing the left lane. Alright, losing the left lane then. Now look at this trailer on this bike. Woo! That joker got a big one. Oh, that's a big trailer. I think he's sleeping that one. That yeah, looked like yeah. a camper trailer. That was like Sister Sue's trailer. Still a little bit more aerodynamic than Composure's trailer, but it's nice. A little bit more <laughs> aerodynamic. This fool going to jump around. Go for it. Yeah, he, he's in a hurry to go nowhere. Yep, it's a long way to the next thing. So he can't, he ain't getting nowhere fast. We on, we on Route 66, right? Uh, is that right there? On the road right next to us, that whole Route 66 right there. That's right. where you go over there and you get your kicks on Route 66. Yep. Now, when we get up to Laguna, if y'all would like to ride on old 66, there's about a five-mile section. You can just jump off and ride and jump right back on. Won't slow us down, but maybe ten minutes. If y'all want to say you rode on old 66. Nah, we good. All right. I mean, I it's don't see. It's just like riding on I-40. <laughs> the same thing. It's just a road. Yeah. We can say we've been on it. Yeah, well, you no were, actually, when we when we rode across 4th Street, that's old 66, too, so you already been on old Route 66. Now, Route 66 runs from Chicago down through St. Louis, Springfield, Missouri, to Oklahoma City, close Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, and then it picks up 40 and goes west all the way out to, uh, actually, it ends in the Pacific Ocean in L.A., that's how people got from Chicago to L.A. back in the day. And of course, they wrote the song about it, and they list all the major cities that it uh, that it covers. Even list to come carry Mexico, uh, New Mexico. Now, when we, when we crest up over this hill, y'all going to see why they call it Nine Mile Hill, because it's nine miles to the bottom of the Getting valley. Getting some wind noise. Getting a lot of wind noise. Yeah, somebody got the wind noise. All right, here we go. Look at that. Wow, Woo! look at that. Wow. That's a view for you now. That's the real Man. Perco Valley down there. Rio Perco Valley? Yep. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that. That big old group of buildings right down there that you see at the bottom, that's uh that's the Route sixty six casino. All right. Over over to your right is the Tohajali Navajo Reservation. It's actually most of all of this is the Laguna Pueblo, but they gave a, a small section of it to some Navajos. It's called Tohajali. That's where in the in the uh T V show Breaking Bad where he okay. buried the money was right out here to the right. Right. Man, this is beautiful scenery. Real nice. Perfect weather, 74 degrees. And this is Route 66, or I-40. Man, this is really beautiful. This is what they call the high desert. The high desert? High desert. Wow. Why is that? Because they, you can smoke weed out here? That's because you, <laughs> you can smoke your weed in it. Oh, okay. They be smoking peace pipes out here. That's right. Peace pipe, weed, cigar weed, devil lettuce, whatever you want to call it. It's all cigar <laughs> weed. Cigar weed. Give me some of that cigar weed. Mm. Is that legal out here? Uh, I believe so. I think they legalized it. They got dispensaries and whatnot out here now. I'm pretty sure they're back there. Oh, okay. I'm not I'm not positive, but I believe it. I know they've been smoking it out here forever, but I think it's legal. Oh, okay. They decriminalized what they was already doing anyway. 
There you go. With that decriminalized. Yeah, it's pretty nice down through here. It's actually getting cooler down to 71 degrees. Yep, as you drop back over that. Uh, as the sun picks up a little bit, it pushes the cool air off of the mountain, off of the Sandias. It comes right up over here, dumps down in the Rio Puerto Valley, uh, and then by noon, all that cold air is gone. <laughs> it pushes out, so... I was looking at Composure with his jacket on. I thought he might want to take that jacket off. But now I should have left my jacket on. <laughs> it's going to warm what up was pretty I, quick. What was I thinking? That was a good call there. Summer breeze makes me feel fine. Wow. Blowing through the jazz lips in my mind. Yeah. Thank you. Thank don't, you. Thank don't, you. Thank you. Don't quit your day job. This little steel bridge right here, that's the original bridge that went across the Rio Parco for Route 66. Okay. Now, that they place over there to your right is Laguna uh, Burger. They got yep. some good burgers over there. Yeah, they got some good the burgers. The Rio Parco. And that's the Rio Parco. Now, this is dirt. Unless they get a real big rainstorm, then they have some water. But most of the time, it's just dirt. They need a hotel right $49. Hey, once again, I just want to remind everybody that's riding today, if you hit it big in Vegas, I just want a small piece, just a small smidget. Hey, Chris, if I hit it big, I'm going to get me a trailer. I'm going to have me a trailer before we go back home. Man. But, you know, I noticed when I said that everybody got quiet. I already g gave my... I'm going to buy you a brand new a brand Harley. New. No, no, you said that yesterday. I know that's why I'm going to say it again today. I'm, I'm consistent. Flagstaff. Is it 306 to Flagstaff? Yep, 306 miles to Flagstaff. Animal. February, I don't want a Harley. I know, that's why I'm giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what's my other option? Uh, twenty five dollars. I no, I give them a, I give you a lottery ticket. I buy you a, a dollar lottery ticket. That could be worth two hundred million dollars. Boy, it might it may not be worth nothing. It might be worth a dollar. Hmm. Might win a new ticket. So you might? Are kind, so you are kind as well as divine. Watch out, this truck up here is slowing down. Oh, he turned it back off. He had his hazards on for a minute there. He had a hard time making it up the hill, I guess. I think I can. I think I can. Oh, now he's going down. He's kicking it in a little bit. Yeah, there's something else. All this brown out here. You know, I've seen the pictures. We've been seeing it for two days now. Yep. There is this. We left Oklahoma City. Boy, really. Yeah, Oklahoma City. That's the good thing about this trip. Well, now we're going to get uh, the brown. We get a little bit of it out there in California. And then when we come back and we hit Colorado, you're going to get some of the most greenest, beautiful, hilly mountainous country you've ever seen. you ever seen in the world. Not the city, but the world. Now, Dustin, have you ever uh, ran across 10 I-10 10 in Texas? I sure have. Well, you notice if you go from east to west, from the Louisiana line all the way to uh, El Paso, it's like it's, it's like you go from green and, and all the way from forest all the way to desert. Yep. In one state. Yeah, I think it's what eight, eight or nine hundred miles from, uh, like about eight fifty. Yeah, something like that. It's long ways across from from Louisiana line to El Paso, the Mexico line. Texas did take you a full day to get across there. Well, as far as my truck is concerned, I, if I start out in Texas, I won't be able to make it across the state before I have to shut down. Yeah. This is the limit. Wake up in Texas, drive all day, and go to bed in Texas. That's a big state. It is, yes, sir.
Now, you talk about driving, uh, doing a motorcycle trip up to Alaska. That's the only state that's actually bigger than Texas. It sure is. Look at that big old mountain over to the left. It's a huge yeah. mountain. Yeah, that's a big one over there, too. Yeah. We're going to go past Mount Taylor up this way. That's the one we saw coming into Albuquerque. It's like 75 miles out. Right. You can you can see it from Albuquerque. <laughs> you can't see it right now because we're down in the valley. But. Right. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't drink and drive. Don't be distracted. Don't drive distracted. Said report to drunk drivers, but everybody know snitches get snitches. Fired <laughs> up in snitches. Snitches get stitches, huh? <laughs> That's what they say. I wouldn't know. I ain't never snitched, so. Oh, okay. That's what you heard, huh? That's what I've heard. Through various sources. I didn't hear it firsthand. To various sources. <laughs> I do not have a criminal record, so I don't know how the criminal world works. Yeah, I like to thank God for all of the nice weather we've been having. We've been having some good weather the whole time. I mean, it was a little bit hot yesterday, but I'd rather have it hot and dry than to have it wet and cool. Amen. So I, 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 nice. I'm glad. I just thank God for this good weather we've been having. It's been beautiful. I don't think we could have had better weather. Uh, well, Alabama there on the right there, coming up on the uh, all the way from Birmingham there. Hmm. She's a long way from home. Alabama. That's so in the black uh, Sedona right here. My good friend Forrest Gump was from Alabama. Greenbow, Greenbow Alabama. Uh, Forrest Gump was from Alabama? Yep. 32 PSI is in the trailer, 79 degrees and 81 Fahrenheit on the trailer. See, Go if Forrest Gump was out here, that's what he would tell you. 36, he, well, 38 on the front, 46 on the rear, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. The photos work, man. I like that. It's nice to be able to see all that stuff. And as they say in the hood, everything working. Everything working. Not everything is working. Everything. Everything working. You gotta, you gotta, you you gotta say it as like a double negative. Everything working. Everything is working. <laughs> Got a Harley up there in the right lane. Yup. He gonna get gapped. <laughs> We're about to about to roll on past him. That's one of them Harley Classic Ultra Slide Glide FLHX 1742s. <laughs> yeah, they got too many too many numbers on their bikes. Too many, too many. <laughs> they got to add all that stuff, man. I'm sure the Harley people know what all that means. But if they start talking yeah. about all the FLX, I was like, nah, no, it's just a Harley. Right. I don't, whatever. Just, just make it simplified. That's a tour in Harley. Okay. Yeah, there you go. He don't have a helmet on either. Yeah, New Mexico, you don't got to have one. You do in California. Fans coming that. up. Fans coming yeah. up behind you. Was that for right? Okay, right. I figured that. Y'all want to take the right lane? Let them on by. Now we're gonna yeah, get past this. Get past that Harley. Once we pass something, he's probably gonna try and speed up or something. You know how they do. I'm a, I'm a chain uh, lane. I'm a chain lane so that Harley, so that car can get over. All right, let's start doing it. Come on, Harley. Ooh, that little community over there to the left show sure has grown. It was on about three or four trailers last time I was out here. Going back to the left, Dustin. <clears throat> Got the SUV on our tail. Ah, uh, okay. Do we need to be in the right lane? Want to get back over to the right? Y'all want, yeah. want to get back to the right lane? Yeah, let's go, let's go yeah. back over to the right. All right. We're going to go to the right lane. Y'all right, get a chance. Over. Switch to the right. Everybody go to the right. Put that Harley on the rear.
Yeah, you can't be out here with no Maypop tires. Yeah, that ain't no joke. No, sir. Duffin, you put your two brand new tires. You put two tires and wheels right on your trailer. I feel I feel pretty confident riding on the world's most dangerous run flat car tire that's not made for the <laughs> rim. I'm feeling pretty confident right now. Even if I get something at my tire, I can still drive somewhere. Go get it fixed. Not according to Greg Patterson, you can't. Yeah, Greg Patterson may also tell you Santa Claus is going to bring you something for Christmas, but that don't mean it's true. Let's bump it up a little bit. Can we bump it up a little bit, Dustin? What's that? Can we bump it up just? Yep. Bump it up. I'll bump it up two miles, two miles an hour. Let's see how that does. All right, All right I'm going to bump up mine two miles an hour. Yeah, folks out here, they drive like they drive fast, so we're trying to get ahead of traffic. Nope, see, now I'm leaving you, huh? Well, I'm going to have to reset mine. For some reason, it didn't, even, it didn't even grab. At least it didn't feel like it. All right. I'll hold what I got then. All right, I'm going to set it right here. See if I can get it to grab. Okay, yeah, I got mine set. I'm at 79. All right. Mine, says, mine looks like it says 80, so we off. My spine was a little bit off. That's all right, though. I'm going to bump it down one. I have never been able to get my cruise control synced with another bike perfectly where we both just, I've never been able to do it. It's always either I'll slowly gain on them or I'll slowly fall Go back. Them. Yeah. You know what? Mine do the same thing, Justin, man. I'm, yeah. You know, I, I, up, I said it, either it'll go so fast, it'll like speed up to everybody, then I have to fall back. Yep. Yeah, it is, uh, they don't like to do, they don't like to stay in sync for some reason. It'll run fine, keep you where you want to be, but it will not sync with another bike for nothing. For nothing. I've been riding, been riding for a while. I ain't never been able to do it. I've had cruise control for 10 years or more. You ain't never, never been able to do it. Never been able to get it synced. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. how, you know, when I see a lot of rocks and, you know, land and stuff like that, I think about how people say they don't believe in God. Yeah, looking at the wide open fastness, you know, we're stuck down where we're at with the trees and you can't really see everything. It gives you a different appreciation for what's around you. Right. Makes you realize how small we are in the scheme of things. In the scheme of things, that's right. See, I used to live in Albuquerque and I worked all the way out here. I had a 40 mile drive every day. I bet it gets dark out here at night. See, it does, yes, sir. But in my younger days, I had that uh, Jixxer 600 little sport bike that I would ride back and forth to work. And I did every bit of uh, what that engine had to offer several times <laughs> out here. So in other words, you maxed out the odometer. I sure did. I said, uh, let's see if we can make that speedometer hit the needle. And it did. It bounced. Ouch. Woo. Taking the left lane. All right, hitting the left lane. Hitting All right, the left lane. lane. Get this left lane. I have been down this stretch of road many times, many, many times. When you was knee high to a June bug, fry bread, huh? Indian taco. Now that stuff is good, man. If we if we wasn't going to have to eat lunch, we did. I'll tell you what. That's good stuff. It's like southern cooking, but for the desert. It's full of grease and bread. Man, man it's good. And what you see over here in the distance, that's the old Laguna Pueblo. They know me at L Laguna Pueblo. With the Pueblo Indians, Laguna Indians. Perfect. 74 degrees on the air temp. And I think this cooling seat is kind of helping out a lot, too. I feel like I'm sitting in some ice water. I always thought when I lived out here that I wanted to give me one of those cooling jackets with the water that runs through it. Yeah, I've seen those. I never did, though. They got those ones that uh, inflate when you fall off the bike. 
Oh, you talking like an airbag suit or something? Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Those. Yeah, they tell it to the bike, and then you fall off, and they automatically inflate. How, how do you know if it works? You fall uh, off your bike? Yeah, but I mean, obviously they test them. You hope you, hope you never need it. It's like an airbag. Mm. Yep. You think you tested one, uh, Fire Warrior? Oh, I said you hope you never have to. Oh. It's like this rain gear we got. I brought it, but I hope I never have to use it. Like an yeah. insurance policy. Yeah, you're right about that. Like an insurance policy. Gotta have it, but you hope you never use it. That's right. Like a spare tire. Or a Better. fire extinguisher. Same thing. RX wife. <laughs> <laughs> Now, technically, you already used the ex-wife. <laughs> During Christmas time, it's nice to come through here all on top of that little mesa right there. They put little paper bags with a candle in it. Uh-huh. Like, little Christmas is up on the house. We go all the way around the top of that mesa. Thousands of them. And it, it just lights up right up there. It's really cool looking. Yeah. Right here is where I used to work in Masita. They lived down right there too. It was Laguna Industries. I worked right there building stuff for the military. Look like they opened back up. They got a bunch of cars over there. Masita. If you're ever on the Laguna Pueblo and you want to say good morning to them, you tell them the wash the eye. That's how you say, say it what? in that language. You say the wash the eye. That's how it's like the wash the eye. Cole. Do, wash your That's, eye. <laughs> Do That's you good wa- morning. Do you wash your eye? In Karis. That's their language. Carissa and Karis. Oh, bump. That's when you That's say a- to them, do you wash your eye? Yeah, do you wash your eye? <laughs> They'll be like, good morning to you, too. Now, what does this say? Like we elk. I know, that it, I know that's not elk crossing. Yep. They got deer, elk, all kind of stuff out there. And they got mule deer. Not them little deer like we have, the little tree rats. Break check up here look like. Yeah, uh-huh. it looks like we, I think we're cutting down to one lane up here. They're doing some striping or something. Looks like we're cutting down to one lane and we're merging. Well, no, it's got both lanes open. They just don't have no stripe down the middle. They got the DOT up here on the side. Well, we, they're swerving around him. Everybody's swerving around him. Yeah, I don't want no road paint on my bike, that's for sure. <coughs> that stuff's hard to get off. Sick. Did yeah, look at that rock. The whole city sick look at that rock. rock. That's a huge rock formation. Yeah, right there around that edge, that's old 66 right there. Dustin, I didn't know they had another Laguna Burger here coming up. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's old Laguna Pueblo over to the right. That's where they uh, there's a little gas station right down there, and that's got they sell Laguna Burger. That's where they originally started at. Okay. I only went to the one across from the Route uh, 66 Casino. Right, right. And I know they're building one. Or last time I went there, they're building one inside the. Uh, the casino, they were placing Johnny Rockets, which I like Johnny Rockets, too. It's always stop in there and get that Philly steak sandwich. Yeah. Up here on that little hill to the right, that's a, a church, the old Laguna Church. That's been used in some Clint Eastwood movies and uh, quite a few Western movies. They've filmed movies up there at that little church. Oh, Okay. Like that movie Dust of Dawn? Uh, I don't think that one. <laughs> what was the name of that uh, bar at the, on Dust of Dawn, that bar? Uh, oh, uh, the Titty Twister. <laughs> 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 That's what you're talking yeah. about. Dust of Dawn. Have anybody seen that movie Dust of Dawn? Yeah, I saw I've seen it, yeah. That's a Quentin Tarantino yeah, movie man. with, uh, what's the guy uh, named, Cheech, Cheech Martin? Cheech, yeah. Yeah, uh, Cheech Martin. Cheech Marin? What's that lady named? Hi, uh, is it Sandra Heimick, Heimick or something? Or? George Clooney. Yeah, yeah George, George Clooney. George Clooney's in it. Uh-huh. That was a good movie. Dust to Done. 
went into the bar and everybody turned into vampires. Selma Hayek. Damn, yeah, there was Selma Hayek. That's her yeah. name. I said Sandra, but yeah, Selma Hayek. Yeah, you know, talk nice when you talk about my girlfriend now. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. That's not what she told me. <laughs> she a lie. <laughs> she does that all the time. She gets confused when she speaks in English. Don't pay no attention to her. Oh, okay. That she a lie, huh? Yeah, she a lie. She's been my girlfriend for a long time. Mm. Long time. Long time. Long, long time. Now, when that movie Desperado came out, that's when we met. That was uh, when she was in a movie with uh, uh, Antonio Banderas? Yep, yep. Yeah. I like that movie, too. It's pretty good. Yeah, that was Desperado, right? Yeah. No, so, that was... Was that Desperado? Yep. Yep. Okay. We had the Banderas. brothers with the guitar teeth with the guns in them? Yep, that's the one. Okay, yeah, that's my food. that's my movie right there. Cheech Marin was in that one, too. He was the bartender. The bartender in quite a few movies now, let's not think about it. Well, he went from drinking to smoking weed. I mean, from smoking weed to drinking. Yeah, yeah. He had to trade for a while. Yeah. Better for his, better for his health, I guess. Big old train down there. You see them coming through all the time. Moving lots of cargo. Yep. That means we're in the hood. That means we're in the hood. Yep, we're in the hood. The hood. One, one train conductor can do the job of a hundred truckers. <laughs> And he could be on his cell phone in Texas, probably ain't no problem. Good. Out here, he, he won't can. be swerving all over the road and stuff. <laughs> By how you think they get the cargo to the train yard to load it up, they take a truck. Unless they have a port. Well, that's how we use all our military, you know. Military equipment by train yep. to the shipyard. Yeah, when you uh, when you uh, transport stuff overseas, it goes on a ship. Yeah. Put it on the rail, take it to the port, put it on the ship. Get overseas, pick it up at the port, drive it to wherever you're going. Yep. You have to strip it down. Then put everything back together. Take the doors off of it. You ever uh, have to uh, prep those to bring them back to the States, man? You got to do a lot of stuff to them. Oh, yeah. Got to get all that dirt, all that sand, all that whatever out of there. Yep. I don't want to bring none of that stuff back to the States. Contamination. Don't want to tra transport any new bugs, insects, reptiles, or nothing. 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 If we would only stay like this the rest of the day, it would be beautiful. That would be very awesome. Yeah. Chris, what you got on your range, sir? 144. 144. One, you got what? Got Come two, back. 235. You got 235? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm in tour mode. And I'm walking it down, walking it down, let you glide. Ultra. Yeah, I think that's hard for y'all missing the round. That's the old one. That's probably a 96-inch cubic inch. What are you up to now? Is that the same guy that we uh, passed earlier? Yeah. He's been with us all the time. 
Yep, it's been hanging on our all the time. It doesn't look like, uh, it might look like maybe probably a, uh, 88. Yeah, 88 or 96. So, hold on. But uh, what cubic inches are is the Harley up to now? Does it, anybody know? Huh? What um, I would say uh, the one. Let's see, the one, the one seventeen is 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 probably the the biggest stock. But you can you can you can get them kits put in. Yeah, that's why I say one, one seventeen. But you can get kits where they if they higher than that. One thirty one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which kit, which kit you get depends on which stage you're going to and which motor you have. Twin cam, Evolution, and the M8. Not exactly in that order. Because it goes Evolution, Twin cam, M8. That's what I had. I had on. Uh, but you know what? Whoa! What? Well, what was that? That was boiled out to one seventeen. What was that? Uh, composure? Just a little right in the road. I saw Dustin's trailer hit it. I tried to avoid it. Yeah, that's a little. Well, you didn't do a very good job of that, sir. Thank you for your professional critique, sir. You <laughs> are. <laughs> that wasn't my trailer. That was my foot got stuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, I wish you could see this from my vantage point, man. It's just vanished. And you wear them big squash old boots. It's just... Man. That's how I keep from falling over. I just drag my feet on the ground. Hmm. Hey, Godspeed. Yeah. Uh, that's what I like about the gold wing, because you never hear... A whole lot of gold we ain't to talk about doing any engine work. I don't think I've ever heard a gold wing rider talk about boy not a pipe uh, power commanders. So one guy got a uh supercharger on one. On but it's not it's not common is what I'm saying. Both guys get them out the box and they don't do anything to their engines. Well, uh, it's already perfect. Usually, Harley riders, they always, I mean, if they want a more performance, they're going to uh, do something to the engine. Yep, they're going to start out with the air cleaner, exhaust, and then they get into the engine. Yes, they don't do it all at one time. Right. Sometimes they they, they get all the work done before they even put three. it off the, sometimes they uh, get the, Stage one, stage two, stage three, whatever they get on it, before they even pick it up. All right. I think, I think it's ninety days. You can uh, you can go up those stages within ninety days. After that, they not they not they not warranting it. Actually, uh. They warrant them as long as you let it duck, let it duck, let the dealership do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But if you let it go past 90 days, I don't think it is. At least that's what they told me with that 17 I had. Yeah. Yeah. We get the work done by them within that first 90 days. You're good to go. Anything after that, they warrant the steps down. Put the extended warranty on it. And well, the Harley warranty that it comes with is only uh, without, uh, if you don't get the extended warranty, I think it's a year. If I'm not mistaken. Because when I bought mine, I had to, I think I got a five year warranty with it or a four year. I'm not, I'm not positive which. Yeah, four year extended warranty. And then you can re extend it after that 
once that one is coming up on expiration. Yeah. I know and I'll frankly, I never even used my warranty on my uh, my V ride at all. So it was kind of a waste of money. I mean, it's one of those things, like I said, it's 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 Better good to have, have, but you hope you never use it. Yeah, I don't I don't look at warranties like a waste because. Well, you say that, sir. I say I don't look at a warranty like it's a waste of money if you don't use it because it's kind of dirt for you. Like I didn't say it was a waste. I said you hope you never use it. Mm-hmm. I thought you. But it's it was... but you, but it's good to have though. Right. Now, I would never say it's a waste because it's it's some nice to have that peace of mind. Right. There you go. I never yeah. have got the extended warranty. I always when I bought a new bike, that three year was enough for me because if something gonna go wrong with me, it's gonna be in that first three years. Well, see, Dustin. The difference between me and you is you are more mechanically inclined than I am. All right, well, that's why we say no. time is money. Either you're going to spend money to get something done, or you're going to spend time to get something done. I got the money, but I don't have the time, so I just have to pay yep. somebody else to do it. Yep. Well, you can pay I, me to I, do I, it. I'll, I'll drive to Illinois and cut the yeah, I'm, just, right, I'm right. exactly the opposite. <laughs> I got more time than money, so I got to help out. <laughs> <laughs> you give me some of that money, I'll be glad to give you some of my time. That's the, he's just the opposite. Justin, how many times do you think you've broken that bike down? I'm talking about broken it down and put it back together. Uh, this particular bike, I've only broken it, what I consider breaking it down, just one time. Uh, Car there. I'm, but I've I've taken it, you know, I've been to multiple levels of taking apart several times. I don't even know. Uh, but usually I do the big ticket stuff. You only got to do that once per bike, you know, maybe twice at the most. Like replacing that rear shock. I replaced the spring on the rear shock. You know, I pulled the gas tank out of it. I pulled it, you know, broke it all the way down to pretty much just the frame. Because uh, it just made it easier because I was doing multiple things at once. I've only really done that one time on this bike. I've had other bikes. I've had other bikes uh, that I broke it down to, to paint the frame. So there wasn't a wire on it. <laughs> there was nothing. It was just the frame itself. And then I put it all back together. It still worked. So <laughs> you don't have any extra parts left over? No, nope, didn't have no extra parts. I even rebuilt the engine on a whole TT600 dirt bike. I took it to. Uh, the transmission was messed up on it and missed the gear, put the shift right, so I took it to the dealership and asked them, you know, have, they, they took it apart, and they started listing me out like thousands of dollars of all those parts they're going to have to get. And I said, well, what part was broken? They showed me it was only one gear in the transmission that was bad. But, of course, they want to change everything. And they were talking about, you know, a couple thousand dollars. And I said, uh, no, thank you. Put it all in a box. I'll take it home. So they put everything and just stuck it all in a box. I took it home. Just had to figure it out. I spent twenty-three dollars for a new, uh, new second gear wheel. Built the whole engine back up. Put the whole bike back together. And went for a ride that afternoon. I'm like, shoot, I ain't paying y'all no. Uh, uh-uh. uh. I got time, but I ain't got that kind of money. Hmm. But see, they got a warranty it though, right? If they take it apart, put it back together, so they're gonna replace all the stuff they can to make sure it don't have no problem. Well, all they yeah. really needed was that one gear. Everything else was fine. Right, so that's why I don't like to go to the dealer to take anything. I could, you know, I could pay them, but I don't have the time to wait on them. That's, is, you know, like you say, you ain't got time, because I got, you know, I ride mine to work every day. So one right. is getting, getting an appointment to even get into a dealership. They're going to tell you two or three weeks. I'm like, well, by then, like, no, man, it's a big thing. I can't wait that long. But and you, got they, some dealers, you got some dealerships that uh, if, it, if it's 10 and below, it won't work on you. Below 10, it won't work oh, on yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't know nothing about it. They won't touch they, it if it's too old. They won't touch it, yeah. And it's not because they don't know how. It's, you know, little things, the brakes, you know, like the little clips and other stuff that, you know, they have to fit the cost for it if it breaks when they take it apart. Um, so they don't want to take the risk of anything coming uh, back on them to have to, you know, if, put the bill for it if it breaks. So they gotta, they gotta, they just won't work on anything older. Plus, they make more money by selling you a new bike than they do off of service anyway.
But I don't like waiting. They take too long. They, they, they just want to wait forever. I, you take it in there, and they'll be like, okay, yeah, we'll make an appointment for you to come in. And that's just an appointment for them to put your bike in a parking lot area and let it sit for a few days before they decide to work on it. Yep. And that drives me crazy. I can't do that. I'm like, if I make an appointment and it's a two-hour job, I expect to drop it off and then come pick it up two and a half hours later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's reasonable. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, why can't they, you know, any other business? You, you you want to get your car painted, you want to get something done, you want to, you know, whatever, you get a haircut. You don't walk up in the barbershop and say, okay, here's your 2 o'clock appointment, sit there and we'll get to you when we're ready. No, you go in at 2 o'clock to get your hair cut. And then you go on with your business. That's why you make an appointment. I just, I can't stand that. I can't stand that. The parent dealership says, if I was running one, everybody would be coming up in there. But it'd be, it costs too much, though, because then there's a certain amount. The service managers, they don't make but, you know, 20, 20 bucks an hour or something like that. They don't make as much money, so they don't, you know. Are they going to somebody walking in the desert? They had no shopping cart, though, did he? No, they didn't have a shopping cart. They had a cane. Yeah, yeah. He had the walking poles. Walking poles and a, and a backpack. Mm. Right. See, the poles are to fight off the rattlesnakes when you're walking down the road. That's what that's for. Right. Oh, that's what that's for? Yeah. Because if you're walking on flat pavement, it's not like you need it for traction. <laughs> it's to fight off, <laughs> fight off that rattlesnake. That'd be all up on the side of the road. Yeah, that they, they cross the road sometimes. We passed one back yeah. there a little while ago. Yeah. It was on the left side. It was a, well, it looked like a snake. I thought it was a snake. Wait till Bullet open his trailer, lady. Mm. Uh, see that? We left him a snake. He said he wanted a pet, so we put one in there for him. I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> I don't want that kind of smoke. Hey, man, that temperature's holding up great today. It's only 70 degrees. It's that's nice. That's I got 73. And it's, uh, what time is it? 9, 9.16? Yep, 9.16. Yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be, uh, going back up in elevation soon. So it's going to be a little bit cooler. So we're going to be, we're going to be out of this hot part. Hot, hot part. It was perfect plan. We got out just on time this morning. Huh. Yeah, we did. I mean, good temperature. I ain't gonna make it with this helmet on. Why that truck honk at me? I don't know. You all right What's back to Godspeed? As soon as when we get to the first gas stop, I'm gonna swap these headsets on this helmet. This is killing my ears. This helmet is not comfortable. Okay. The helmet is not comfortable? What What kind of helmet you got? It's my this is my backup helmet. Oh, that's why I bought the new one. But okay. the, uh, my mouthpiece messed up on the new one, so I went on and put this one on so we could get rolling. You want to stop and uh, swap it over? We I last till we get to the first gas station. When we fill up, I swap it out. Okay. Okay. Well, Dustin, uh. He said, I guess the first fuel stop, he'll swap out. Yeah. Yeah, we got, let's see, I'm we're at 80, 82 miles. We got about 50 miles, maybe, something like that. I'll last. You'll make it about an hour? You think you can make it an hour? Yeah. I won't push it through. I, that's why I told you. I don't want to okay. pull over. I want to keep going, keep our, keep our thing going, and, uh, as soon as we get to that gas station, I'm going to pump this gas and pop this helmet out okay. and, and switch them out. Well, if, you, we'll if, if you see a convenience stop, Dustin, just take it. Yeah, if it's hurting now, we'll pull over. Yeah, if you see a convenience stop, just take it. That way we can all just regather ourselves for a few minutes and let them do that. 
All right, can we and, pull uh, off right here and get gas? We won't. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, y'all come on around that truck at the exit right here. All right. I'll come behind. I'll pull it. I'll come behind. I'll pull it behind. Pull it behind. Pull it behind. We're going to take this exit right here. Yeah, I know I hate this, don't you? Well, I've been here. I've had that. And that, man, that's so oh, hard. Yeah. I was like, how long could you make it? Because... Hey, we're taking, this ex we're taking this exit right in front of the truck. So, yeah. Well, it shouldn't take too long, long. We don't just, you know, what stand around. What they got going here? Uh-oh. What they got going here? Are they doing something with the bridge? Because uh, we got 500 miles remaining. That's eight hours. We're going to the left or the right. I got, I got 495, Chris. What you got? <laughs> Well, it's 500, 495. Yeah, hey, man, I'd rather see 495 than see 500. But the good thing, the good thing is that this evening we'll be in Vegas. So, that's right. You know, yep. good that's, thing that's, is. that's the good thing. We'll be in Vegas this evening, so that'll be the, this is the last stretch of the, well, there's a McDonald's. There's a KFC. Uh, if you want to go to the McDonald's over there, somebody might want to grab them a biscuit or something if they 